We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. This crowd here fired up for football as a moment ago their Titans were introduced. This should be a good one as the Titans get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And now movement here right away. Maybe a sign of things to come with this crowd. Charles, for Jacksonville, how do you break down what has happened to them this season? I mean, three and eight now, seven straight losses, and they can pretty much forget about the playoffs. Truthfully, I'm absolutely shocked. I did not see this coming from this team. I thought that they built themselves to such a stage last year that it was a jump off to this season. And we keep coming back to early in the year when they jumped on New England. I thought that was a turn the page, eliminate you know, the AFC Championship game loss, and keep moving forward. They've not been the same team since. It actually worked against them. I think they thought they were better than what they were, or they thought that people would be afraid of them. Whatever it is, you see them playing with a lack of poise, and now they've jettisoned their offensive coordinator. He became the scapegoat for their troubles. It's much bigger than that. On second down, Kessler. Sharks got it, left side. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. The pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And he's got Moncrief. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook tough to defend because you think it's a go route and then he breaks it back on the comeback there's one other thing you need as well a well-thrown ball exactly right have a guy who has some precision and throwing the football because of the timing of the right, route. they go play action here on first down looking for his tight end on the corner it's complete and he'll go down but not before getting this inside the 30 a good pick up there 26 yards how about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Chances are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Here we go now. Here's Leonard Fournette, 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. The tackle is made by Adoree Jackson. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Hurry up, here we go. Three, Throwing his Kessler on third down. And that is incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. On is Josh Lambeau now for the Jaguar field goal. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. So the next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, 
How can we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with coaches, but it is a big part of it. Look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick, and not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They go play action. Mariota over the middle to Smith. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. This defense tightening up a bit. That last catch just one yard, making it third and nine. Off the play fake, Mariota. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. Touchdown, Titans. A big play there, 60 yards. And the Titans have taken a first quarter lead. When we draw up defenses on the board, we do account for every receiver. But on that particular play, somehow he was wide open, became an easy touchdown pass. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And that makes the score 7-0. Now here's Suckup out to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Kessler, and that is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Second and ten now from the 27. Second and ten now. Kessler once more. Over to the right side. Caught by Moncrief. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. This is T.J. Yeldon. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Daquan Jones in on the tackle there. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. The Super Bowl hero, Malcolm Butler, makes a stop. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. From the gun on third, Kessler. He's going to go for a big play downfield and almost picked off. 
I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say, when you run in the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 24. On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. On play action, Mariota steps away. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Mariota had an 87-yard run as a rookie. This one a bit less, but it is a first down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's a bootleg with Mariota. Throw right side caught by Davis. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. A first down throw for Mariota. Blitz coming and down he goes. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Play fake, Mariota. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. Miles Jack can just flat out cover. Doesn't matter who's out there, and he can do it really well in man. How about what he just did there in zone, though? Eyes in the right place, saw where the ball was going, reacted appropriately, and knocked it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Mariota. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. 
But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. This quarterback now, six of 10 in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. On play action, it's Kessler. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. D.D. Westbrook, his intended receiver. And now it's second down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Here we go now. They go play action. Kessler. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So it can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Again, it's Kessler. Down goes Kessler. Brian Arakpo. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Jackson. 12 yards on the return that time, and it'll be Titan football. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Stocker's got it. Complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Play action now. Mariota rolling to his left. And he goes out right around the 39. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Deion Lewis, the first carry for the expatriate. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Deshaun Gibson there on the tackle. out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's the Titans with the football here to begin quarter number two. They're up against a third and two to start things out. To throw is Mariota. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. 
Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Here's Brett Kern now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here right, on here second go. and 14. On second down, here's Kessler. And his throw is incomplete. Trying to get it there to D.D. Westbrook. And that'll make it third down. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Jaguars on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 14. gun Kessler nowhere to escape and he goes down Derek Morgan in there to drop it for a loss of 10 and it'll be fourth and long well if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part gets a chance to get out to the quarterback it's almost like a reverse red zone they can create points using their defense and this time they take their man down with it is Jackson Good coverage there. An even 50-yard punt leads to a return of five. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 46. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Over the middle, Sharp's got it complete. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. at the 43-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. 
This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And now out come the Jags. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now let's go! They begin with a run by Fournette. And not a whole lot doing there. So he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Tackle made by Brian Arakpo. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Kessler looks to throw on second down. He's going to look deep down the field. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and nine. Shotgun snap, Kessler. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He'll send this up into the Nashville skyline, and it's a good one. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, somehow the ball finds his way back to him. Atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. They'll start on the ground, it's Derrick Henry, and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. From the 22, here's second and eight. Four down, four down. Off the toss, Lewis. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. That's a football play right there. That takes me back a little bit. Toss sweep to the right, get it to your back, get a lot of people out in front, control the line of scrimmage, wide receivers blocking downfield. It almost feels like half the crowd is in front of him, getting it down to the secondary. They have a tough time getting him down. Right back to him on first down. And this time they're able to bottle him up as he'll stop him at the line of scrimmage. Barry Church, the strong safety, the one to get him down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. They'll try to throw now, Mariota. Dumps it off to Lewis. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be third down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Three, two, 18. 
On first and ten, here's Mariota. Smith catches left side. Takes this to the 45. Broken tackle. Bought him a little extra space. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So the delay of game penalty backs him up. It's now second and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. The Titans on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Now Lewis. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. He already has two sacks to his credit. Now another tackle for loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, they've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible because right now he is wrecking things for them. Start out on the ground, it's T.J. Yeldon. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now let's go. Green, 39. On second down, here's Yeldon. And he takes us across the 15 to the 17. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. From the gun on third down, Kessler. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Brian Arakpo able to drop it for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at the 45. To throw Mariota. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Mariota now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. Throwing is Mariota. Sets up the screen to Lewis. 
A good first down call as the screenplay gets him nine. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Mariota. Incomplete. The intended receiver there was Janu Smith, and it's third and short. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. The Titans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Again, it's Mariota. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, they almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Now here's Suck about to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. With that incompletion, let's look forward to the rest of the NFL season. You know, a lot of people say the season doesn't really begin, get exciting till after Thanksgiving. Well, what are you looking forward to in the month of December? I do like that expression because each sport has its own, doesn't it? Teams that are in first place July 4th in baseball, that's who's going to win the division, right? That's one of the old adages. We go on and on, but for me, this is what I'm going to look forward to. The NFC East could be a three-team race. How about the revival of the Chicago Bears? And last but not least, the AFC West is controlled by Kansas City, but the sleeper team, the Los Angeles Chargers. Boy, Keep an eye on them. Yeah, they're knocking on the door with just three losses, KC with two. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green. On third down, Fournette. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. 
Now another timeout here called by the Titans as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. With that incompletion, need to pass along the note about the Madden Classic, where you can watch some of the best Madden players battle it out for their share of 165 grand. It's live on Twitch, Charles. Starts 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, December 6th through the 8th. I know you'll be tuned in. Thank you for letting me know the time and the dates. I'm going to mark that down. I will be ready to go because they go at it now. I mean, those battles, those are pretty strong. And I love the imagination that you see in how they play because they don't think like conventional football. They know how to take advantage of any weaknesses of their opponent. And the best part, $165,000 on the line. You and I better hone up our game. Yeah, some people looking for some early holiday gifts there in the Madden Classic. They go play action here on first down. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away and it's second down. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. On second down, Mariota again. Flush to his right. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. The Titans on third down, three for seven so far in this game. Here it's third and three. They run, this is Lewis. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Two yards on the pick up there, it's fourth down. So we've reached halftime here in Nashville, the Music City, with the Titans out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! This will be taken in at the one. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Out come the Titans now. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you feel like you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Hey. Hey. 
Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Mariota now from the 50. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Nothing open downfield, and he had to get that one out in a hurry because he just knew he was about to take a big shot. Probably couldn't get his legs into the throw. Became an all-arm throw trying to check it down to his running back. Incomplete. The Titans on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and six. From the gun, Mariota. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now Leonard Fournette, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play, because that's been an issue for them in this game. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, Let's barring go. a conversion here on third down. Now it's Kessler. And he's got Moncrief. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Here we go now. Fournette, a first down carry. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Hurry up, here we go! Kessler now off the bootleg. And that's going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hurry up, here we go! Throwing his Kessler on third down. And that is incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. 
And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Mariota now to throw on first down. It's complete. This is Derrick Henry. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Four yards on the dump off. It's second down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling. Held it to an okay game. To throw is Mariota. His throw incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. The Titans on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. And that's caught by Smith. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Mariota on first down. Throw taken in by Taylor, left side. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Now they'll run on the draw. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third down, Mariota. And incomplete here on third down. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. that time 57 yards the official distance and possession will switch hands first and 10 here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here now, if you're a fan of punting and I know that not many people are but this game kind of turning into one for you well it's okay if it's a skills contest right we're really into it then but not during the course of an actual game this has turned into a field position game though right, sometimes go. a better punter may actually determine the outcome Throwing is Kessler. That one complete to D.D. Westbrook. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. They give him a gain of 38. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. A handoff to Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. 
the play fake. Kessler going deep for Moncrief. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. All right, here we go. Kessler throwing now. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. First down, Jacksonville, the passing game, looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. This quarterback now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Looking to throw, Kessler. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hurry up, here we go. Kessler off play action. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Wesley Woodyard. Well, that incompletion has me thinking. Philip Rivers last week, I know you that saw this. You crazy. were working, but he only threw one of those that we just saw. One incompletion the entire game. His first 25 passes were complete. It was so much fun because I actually saw a highlight, you know, cut up. They put all of them together, one after the other. 25 straight. Mark Brunell had the record previously, 22 straight for Washington in 2006. He goes 28 of 29. And I don't know about you, but that almost sounds more impressive than if he's totally perfect for the day. Yeah. You know what Get I mean? That, it's that, got that one weird, blemish, that, right? That one blemish really <laughs> sets it apart and lets you know what he did. 96.6 completion percentage. Good luck trying to break that record, people. Again, it's Lewis. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Third and long here for Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here we go. 
Kessler now on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. It was Logan Ryan that time who knocked it away. Switching gears for a second to look at the NFL slate. You know, the bye weeks are now over, Charles. And if you had to pinpoint a couple of teams that are surprising you right now with where they're at, who would that be? Well, I didn't think Washington would be in first place this late in the year, and they're still hanging in there. But two teams that really jump out at me. How about the run the Indianapolis Colts are on right now? And how well Andrew Luck is playing the quarterback position. We don't talk about that enough. They could very well win the AFC South with the play they're playing right now. And how about the Denver Broncos? That was a gutsy win at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They are still hanging in there, still hopeful for a wild card spot. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hurry up, here we go. Three, nine. From the gun on third, Kessler. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Jarrell Casey with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. And the Titans getting set to go. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They try again with Lewis. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Now, that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking at the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. And they get to Mariota here as he's dropped on the sack. Yannick Ngakwe bringing the pressure again, and that is his third sack here tonight. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here, Rush comes and they block it. And the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. All right, Charles, help me out here. Fourth quarter, <laughs> you've got the lead, and you run backwards into the end zone. You're just trying to do too much. I almost don't have words for it. But you know, every coach that we talk to talks about running backs or people running the football, running north-south, getting upfield. He went way in the opposite direction. And that's going to cost his team. Yeah, it cost him big time. Still leading, but it costs him. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. Fielded at the 20. <laughs> Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Throwing now, Kessler on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The tight end, Blake Bell, the intended receiver. And it's second down. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Set, green, 39. 
Second and 10 now. Kessler wants more. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's a give to Fournette. And unable to get downhill there, so take this up to about the 37. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at the 20. They'll start off with a give to Lewis. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On first and 10, here's Mariota. Smith catches left side. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards on the play. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And they'll go on the ground. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Flushed out right. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Mariota from the gun on third down. The open man is Smith. And he's taken down inside the 30. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Got him, got him 
Working out of the gun, Mariota finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Suckup will put this one right through. And that will make this now a 15-point advantage. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Suckup now set to kick it off following the made field goal. This one taken from the seven. Nifty move. And now running right through it. And he's all the way up across the 40 and down at the 42-yard line. Great return. There's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession. And to get a return like that to start things off, that's the spark that they needed. That's the spark they were looking for. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. Set, move, landing. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. And the Jaguars getting set to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, he's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he did it. Now the ball comes loose. It's picked up by the Titans. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts him in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. And Henry's hit. He lost the football. And did the Jaguars come up with it? They did. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. Room to run past midfield. And he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Now let's go! A first down throw for Kessler. He's going to let this one go deep. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Set, three, 19. Three, 19. From the gun, it's Kessler. Over the middle, hauled in by Sharp. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not. And they'll try to convert on third and inches. Hurry up, here we go. Green. Again, it's Kessler. And he's got Moncrief. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Couple of the nice plays for Jacksonville. Another first down there. But correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Fournette. And he's got this one down to the 10. 
A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Yeldon. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. They got two of the three they needed there. Leaves them with third and just a yard. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. the shotgun. Kessler toward the pylon. Caught. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the Jaguars get a score closer. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Now, Charles, of course, you got to remember, last possession they fumbled. It led to a touchdown. One score game here. Got to be careful. And this is where coaching and training really comes into play, doesn't it? What, is it? what does everyone say after an error? Next play. Move on. Next drive. That mantra has to come to the front. They've got to take care of business right here and act like the last series just didn't happen. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking to find some space for Deion Lewis there. And that'll bring up second down. And not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Line of scrimmage. Again, the 25, second and 10. On play action, Mariota. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Buying time to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And they work this well upfield across the 45. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. A first down carry for Henry. And they'll stop him right on the midfield strike. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go.
Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively they burn it here with 151 left. third down it's Lewis and past the 35 he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30 and play is stopped here timeout it's the defense calling the timeout here and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flash back to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's a four-yard pickup, and that is going to set up a third and one. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation and taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Mariota with a knee to the ground, and that should be it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Titans are winners here as we say so long from Nashville.